And hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Zhong Zhe Liu. I'm Assistant Professor of Engineering at CSUB. And uh, this summer, I'm leading a summer undergraduate research experience project. Uh, due to the pandemic, we cannot show you our results and our poster in person. Uh, but via Zoom, I try my best to go over all the details of each section of our poster uh, with you. So uh, now let me share my screen. Okay, so this is the, the poster. This is the poster of our project. Our project title is Synergistic Treatment of Dairy Derived Waste Streams for Energy and Resource Recovery. Uh, so in my group, we have Danny, Hugo, Serena, and Mattel. For this project, uh, the background is uh, the, the agricultural industry is facing many challenges at the nexus of nutrient, energy, and water in the increase, with the increase of our agricultural production. One of the challenges is how to sustainably and properly dispose of a high volume of our agricultural waste, such as dairy waste. California is the leading milk producing state in the United, in the United States in terms of the overall number of milk cows. Hence, sustainable and environment-friendly methods for handling huge amounts of cow manure highly demanded in California's agriculture-based areas, such as Kern County. Anaerobic digestion, I'm not sure if you know this process. Anaerobic digestion is a process that are usually used to convert cow manure to biogas. So anaerobic digestion of cow manure is a commercialized bio biological process for energy recovery that produces biogas. And biogas is a pre precursor of renewable natural gas. In addition to the major component of, mes of methane in the, in the biogas, biogas also contains a high volumetric concentration of carbon dioxide. And that can be over 40% because carbon dioxide lowers the energy content of biogas. So biogas requires further upgrading to meet natural gas standards. Uh, moreover, uh, the anaerobic digestion process produces a byproduct the separated cow manure solids. So before, uh, before the feed goes to the anaerobic digester, we need to remove the cow manure solids first using mechanical screen. So these solids are reused as cow bedding, but still contain harmful pathogens. So, that, so we're thinking we need to develop a synergistic treatment process in this project to reduce the CO2 in the biogas and at the same time, we want to stabilize the solids uh, in the process. So this picture, this picture here shows the process. So we have a biogas from the anaerobic digestion process. We have the separated wet cow manure solids. And uh, the wet cow manure solids normally contains about 75% uh, water content. Okay, very high uh, moisture content. And we put these two things in the reactor and the reaction is called reforming process. And finally, we can get two major products. The first product is char and char can be used as a soil amendment for agricultural application. But the char sometimes can be combusted to provide energy to the process itself. Another major product is syngas, okay? Uh, synthesis, synthesis gas, normally we just call it syngas. Syngas can be used for power generation. You can use the energy to provide the energy or to provide, to provide the heat to the process itself. Also, if you have actual syngas, you can use syngas for chemical and fuel synthesis. So this is the concept of this interesting thermochemical uh, process. And uh, during, the, 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 uh, during the, the project, we want to evaluate this process. If we can get, if we can get enough syngas, if we can get more syngas from the biogas and uh, the solids. So we use this reactor, this reactor for the experiment. So for this reactor, we have several major, uh, major parts. The first part is the reactor vessel. So we put the wet cow manure solids in the reactor, and then we inject the biogas into the reactor. And then we seal the whole vessel. 
And then we use the, the heater here. We use the heater here to heat up the reactor to 600, 700, and 800. And after, after, after the, the, the pressure and temperature is stable, we cool down the, the reactor. And when the temperature below uh, 100 degrees Celsius, we collect the gas, we collect the gas using the tether bag here. And finally, we analyze, uh, we will analyze the, the gas composition. And also we weigh the, the residue from the process. So then we can compare with the feedstock. We can know what about the solid conversion efficiency. Okay, so this is the, the experimental setup. So you see here, we have a heater here. We have vessel, it's already housed in the, in the heater. And we have the pressure gauge here, it's a digital one. So we can know the real time pressure inside of a reactor. We also have the, the thermal couple here and we can read the real time uh, temperature using the thermometer. And we have the gas collection system here. And here is the, the, the control panel to control the temperature of the reactor. And th this part shows our preliminary results. So, uh, so this picture shows the feedstock, the wet cow manure solids is here. And on the right side, we can get the char. It's like a black carbon here. And the thin gas we collect in the vial. Okay, we cannot see the, the gas because uh, it's transparent. But the, the thin gas normally contains hydrogen, carbon monoxide, methane, okay, very energetic, very energetic. So this is, this is what we put in, this is what we can get out of the process, the char and the thin gas. And the application of the char and the thin gas I already mentioned here, okay? So we have, set, we have different application, uh, applications, okay, uh, we can use these two products. And this picture, let me maximize. This picture shows the, 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 uh, the reforming temperature, the effect of a reforming temperature on a thin gas yield. So we, as I mentioned, we vary temperature from 600 to 800. So you can see with the increase of the, the reforming temperature, the, the thin gas yield is increasing like 600. When we uh, reform uh, one gram of solids on a dry basis, we can get 80 moles 80 mole of gas, the thin gas. When we increase temperature to 700, we can get over 100. When we increase temperature to 800, we can get over 160 mole of thin gas. So the temperature, well, could increase the thin gas yield, increases the thin gas yield, but that's a trade-off. Uh, finally, we, to try, uh, we try to find the sweet point, the sweet point, okay, maybe around 700 because high temperature means we need how, uh, we need more energy supply to the system. And the energy balance and the mass balance will be conduct, conducted in our future work. And on the, on the right side, we have this diagram showing the solid conversion efficiency. So it means the efficiency is calculated by, uh, by using the, the residue amount divided by the feedstock, the wet, uh, sorry, the dry cow manure solids. So, uh, after we, after we, after after the after the uh, directions, we can see at 600, the conversion efficiency is over 80 percent, and at 700, it's around 85 percent, and as at, 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 at 800, it's also uh, between 80 percent and 85 percent. So the conversion efficiency is very high, from between 80 percent to 90 percent. Okay, very very high. So it means. The, the, this reforming process can convert most solids to the gas phase and also can minimize the volume of the residue. So, and also since uh, we use the high temperature to treat the carbon manure solids, so it's impossible to have any pathogen remain in the, in the residue. So it's totally environment friendly. So I have several students working with me as I mentioned, so this is Danny. So this picture shows, shows Danny, yeah, he is cleaning up the system. And this is Mattel, and he is collecting the gas. And this is Rina, uh, she is weighing the feedstock, okay, and put in the, in the rack vessel. And this is Hugo, he is, set up, he is setting up the reaction system. And this is me. And uh, that's all for our project. And finally, I want to thank uh, the sponsorship from the CSUB 
natural science, mathematics, engineering at school. Uh, there are some are undergraduate research experience program. And I also need to thank uh, Chevron to sponsor uh, this project and provide more uh, research experiences and opportunities to our future engineers. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.